to invade a neighboring country, overthrow the government in its very own capital in 72 hours, and change the governmental system, this is exactly what the ambitious mission of the Kremlin mercenaries called the Wagner PMC sounded like. But then something went wrong. As a result, professionals in their field have been unable to capture the small town of Bakhmut in the east of Ukraine for several months now, which has turned into a real hell on earth for the Russians, also being one of the hottest spots for the soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine. In today's video, we'll be talking about how the Ukrainian army foiled the plans of these musicians and what will be their final chord in this unceasing battle. The main point of indestructibility, the city of heroes, the fortress city. This is how Bakhmut is described daily in the news, as well as in video and photo reports from the scene. The Russian occupiers focused their attention on this once peaceful city of 70,000 in the Donetsk region back in July, shortly after they managed to capture Sabrodonetsk and Lysychansk. Soon after, from a frontline city under attack by Russian missiles, Bakhmut turned into a place terrorized around the clock by Russian artillery, heavy equipment, and infantry. Peaceful neighborhoods where people lived are increasingly turning into scorched ruins, and roads everywhere are littered with black craters from shells, with communication, light, and water having disappeared. Yet despite this, the fighters of the armed forces of Ukraine and Ukrainian volunteers continue to save the locals, regularly taking people out on evacuation flights under the very whistle of enemy bullets and delivering humanitarian aid to the city. After the Russians took control of Severodonetsk and Lysychansk with huge losses, they realized that with the current level of training among the troops and their morale, it simply wouldn't work to take Bakhmut from the armed forces of Ukraine by force. Therefore, in August, the occupying army and the Wagner PMC began their attempt to surround the city, breaking through from the north and south. That is, Severodonetsk and Lysychansk were simply razed to the ground by the invaders with artillery fire. But in the case of Bakhmut, they decided not to risk the remaining resources, going through the operation encirclement of the Ukrainian army defending the city. Solodar was to become the northern border for such a maneuver, and the settlements of Zaitsevo and Apnoia were to be the southern borders. But after the events of autumn, when the armed forces of Ukraine carried out a brilliant counteroffensive in the Kharkiv region, and the Russians were forced to flee from Izium, the battle for Bakhmut ceased to be part of the invaders' coordinated military operation. Instead, the head of the illegal armed PMC Wagner Group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, began to actively push into battle all the available reserves, these being mercenaries and criminals gathered from prisons both throughout Russia and abroad. For example, information recently surfaced about the massive recruitment of the mercenaries from the prisons of the Central African Republic to be used in the war in Ukraine. At the same time, many recruits from there were terrorists previously convicted of war crimes who controlled a significant part of the territory of the Central African Republic for almost 10 years during the Civil War. Apparently, Prigozhin saw his own political benefit in presenting Bakhmut on a silver platter as a war trophy to the Kremlin dictator, therefore putting the regular military forces of the Russian Federation and their command behind the belt, these having to recently retreat from Kherson in disgrace. However, according to the American Analytical Center ISW, or Institute for the Study of War, all the efforts of the Prigozhin Group in Bakhmut are operationally irrelevant after the loss of Izium, located 60 miles to the north. Military analysts believe that the capture of Bakhmut by the Russians in the current alignment of forces is unlikely, since Russian troops and Wagner mercenaries have been besieging tiny settlements in the region for weeks. And for the attack on Bakhmut, it was critically important for them to support the now evaporated Izium group of Russian troops from the north. Let's at least recall how at the end of October, the fighters of the armed forces of Ukraine, 
confidently evicted the Wagner mercenaries and the Russian army from a territory of an asphalt plant in the eastern suburb of Bakhmut. By the way, it took Wagner and the Second Army of the World more than two months of bloody battles to capture just two kilometers of this territory, but only 48 hours were enough to lose it all under the onslaught of the armed forces of Ukraine. The positions of the armed forces of Ukraine are regularly raided by two groups of Wagnerites. The first consists exclusively of PMCs, and the second of prisoners. The first acts as group commanders, trying to plan operations point by point, track the movement of friendly and enemy soldiers, and encrypt all communications. The second is thrown into the offensive after two to three weeks of poor preparation and is used exclusively as cannon fodder. In the latter, this group has much in common with the recently mobilized Russians. One of these prisoners, captured by the armed forces of Ukraine, reported that if, for example, the Ukrainian army eliminates 50 people in the first half of the day, PMC commanders will then try to make up for the losses by the evening with the same number of fresh prisoners, strictly adhering to the mark of at least 900 men in the assault group. According to this prisoner, the Wagner commanders made it clear that for them to bring up a new batch of future dead isn't a problem, this being where our conclusion regarding cannon fodder came from. This information was confirmed by the head of the office of the President of Ukraine, Andrei Yermak, who said that Wagner only gives prisoners machine guns without bulletproof vests and helmets, after which he sends them off to conduct raids on the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine. Moreover, most of the mercenaries are forced to hide in the trenches, where their less fortunate predecessors are still cooling down. The intensity of the attack reaches 10 or more insane attempts each day to capture the positions held by the armed forces of Ukraine, which inspires even more respect for the titanic forces of the Ukrainian brigades holding the defense in this area. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian military is successfully eliminating not only these groups of criminals, but also the PMC commanders themselves. For example, at the end of September, one of the commanders of the group, nicknamed Terek, was eliminated, having received many awards, including the title of Hero of Russia, the DPR, the LPR, and who had previously participated in battles in Chechnya, Georgia, Syria, and Libya. A little later in November, the armed forces of Ukraine eliminated the commander of the Wagner Helicopter Regiment, and in December, an Su-24 with the commander of the Wagner Air Wing and his navigator on board was shot down in the Bakhmut area. Sometimes the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine and the Wagner on the battlefield near Bakhmut are separated by literally a mere 100 yards or so. According to one of the Ukrainian soldiers, they were located on one low hill and the Wagnerites on another, due to which he and his brothers-in-arms even sometimes heard them conversing with each other or laughing. More interestingly, one of the fighters of the armed forces of Ukraine, who previously participated in the battles near Papashna, said that before the Russian army fired from all their guns, literally creating a wall of fire, but now their supplies seem to have run out. In support of his words, the soldiers said that when they captured one of the Russian radios, they heard that the Russian unit stationed nearby asked for additional artillery ammunition, to which they were told that there was no ammunition. Overall, the actions of the Wagnerites and the soldiers of the Russian Federation were mildly described by the fighters of the armed forces of Ukraine as disorganized and chaotic. The military regularly monitors the movement of Russians using drones or thermal imagers at night, thanks to which they can cut off any attempts to break through to the rear and reach a safe distance to minimize losses among their own. But even in such a hell, there is still a place for humor. Sometimes especially extraordinary mercenaries were captured by the armed forces of Ukraine in sneakers and metal helmets from the Second World War. And recently, one of the prisoners recruited into the Wagner deserted and, having reached Novoshoktinsk in the Rostov region, opened fire on Russian policemen, considering them to be Ukrainian saboteurs. Nowadays, Bakhmut reminds us of the Battle of Passchendaele during the First World War when the troops of Germany and the Entente waged trench warfare in Belgium for months, with the front line barely having moved, despite the many killed and wounded on both sides. Additionally, 
Both battles took place in cold and rainy conditions, becoming a symbol of the soldiers' suffering. But for the Russians, Bakhmut turned out to be another trap laid by the armed forces of Ukraine. Despite numerous statements about the importance of Bakhmut and the routes adjacent to it, the capture of the city by the invading forces wouldn't be able to tilt the scales in their favor even a single bit. Since the soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine and their command are fighting against the Wagnerites and the Russian army on their own terms and where they cannot succeed, even if the Russian mercenaries demolish the city and occupy what is left of it, the only thing that they will get in the end is the possibility of passage to Kramatorsk and Slavyansk, leading straight to a dead end. Taking into account the fact that Russia failed to occupy these spots even in 2014, with the help of separatists operating inside the country, today it would take the Russian forces a year, if not more, to try to seize said territory with multiple fortifications and barriers. Fortunately, neither the occupiers themselves nor their command have such ample time. The Ukrainian army, on the contrary, is steadily building up strength and will soon enlist the support of even more impressive Allied military equipment in the form of tanks, fighters, and multi-purpose drones. According to the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Alexei Reznikov, the armed forces of Ukraine will resume an active counteroffensive as soon as the soil freezes and becomes more suitable for the passage of equipment. We advise everyone to be patient and carefully follow what's going on in Svatovo Kramanaya and Melitopol Bernyansk. What's happening there will be a pleasant surprise for everyone, except for the Russian occupiers, of course. What do you think? Will Bakhmut be the last defeat of the Wagner Group? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.